Hi all. Let me discuss today in this video the topic, the essay, the world of wrestling, the world of wrestling, written by Roland Barthes in his work Mythologies in nineteen seventy two. I am sure that the name Roland Barthes is very familiar to you because we have already uh, in the previous semester we have studied structuralism and in this semester we have studied about studied post structural theory so Roland Barthes is fi- is a figure is a theorist thinker who is or who has contributed to the growth of both structuralism and post structuralism and also he is one of the founders of the founding figures of semiotics the study of science systems and uh, even this essay can be incorporated into the category of cultural studies as well in the sense that he is not dealing with a written literary text but a cultural text so let us see what Roland Barthes had to say about the world of wrestling. Okay, the world of wrestling and uh, wrestling is also may not be an unfamiliar item for you because you may have seen wrestling matches in ESPN or any other uh, sports channels. So the essay begins with a quote by Baudelaire, a French writer. The grand look and truth of justice on life's great occasions. So the virtue of all in wrestling is that it is a spectacle of excess. So he begins the essay. And uh, we need to remember that he is writing this essay in 1960s and the uh, wrestling matches and the examples he is taking is from the French. You know, he is a French writer and the French wrestling is what he meant in the 1960s and all that. Okay. So the virtue of all in wrestling is that it is the spectacle of excess. So it's a spectacle, spectacle of uh, or celebration of excess, something which goes beyond. You know, if you have watched uh, any wrestling match, you uh, I think I don't have to elaborate on the point. It's an excess, and you, know, you can f- uh, find uh, excessive uh, energy, excessive fight, excessive emotions pouring down. So it's a spectacle of excess. We, here we find a grand locus or bombastical, uh, you know, uh, grand locus which must have been that of ancient theatres. So this is one point that he is repeatedly saying in this uh, essay that uh, the wrestling matches reminds us of ancient theatres. In the ancient theatres, Greek drama and all that with a mask and with a uh, big, you know, uh, you know, uh, ornamentations and things like that and grand dialogues and actions on the stage and the tragedy uh, so this reminds us of the ancient theaters and in fact wrestling is an open air spectacle so as in the open air stage is an open air spectacle for what makes the circus or the arena what they they are is not the sky a reminding value suited rather to fashionable locations it is the drenching and vertical quality of the flood of light so you must have seen a circus match a, a, a circus a live circus or open air you know arena you know things like uh, festivals things like that with uh, lights flooded with uh, especially in nights and things so this is what the feature all about so it is the drenching and vertical quality of the flood of light even hidden in the most squalid parish in hearts wrestling partakes of the nature of the great solar spectacles greek drama and bullfights in both a light without shadow generates an emotion without reserve so we have in the previous essay uh, from columbus to sachin tendulkar we have discussed you now i think this essay must have been taught before that essay so in that essay as well we had taught that all these greek tragedy and uh, most of the games have some origin in rituals and all these are related to solar rituals and uh, you know ancient societies they used to worship the sun god and uh, from that dionysus and others and uh, from that 
they originated so it reminds us of even in the most uh, squalid parish even if it is uh, conducting in a uh, hall it will have that element so a light without shadow generates uh, an emotion without reserve so uh, the emotions are not reserved it is uh, shown in excess there are people who think that wrestling is an ignoble sport so you and if you have ever watched a wrestling match you see you may say that it's an ignoble sport because uh, you know everything you know they will be beating in such a run you know and you know we cannot accept the cruelty is that that is seen in the uh, you know ring so there are people who say that it's an ignoble ignoble, ignoble means it's not noble but he, what he says is that wrestling is not a sport so there are people who say that it's an ignoble sport and he says that it's not even a sport it's a spectacle okay and it is no more ignoble to attend a rusted a uh, performance of suffering than a performance of the sorrow of arno for andromax so see in the same way we are watching a tragic performance on stage so if you if there is nothing ignoble in watching a tragic play on the stage here arno for andromax these, these are all tragic characters and you know uh, molie uh, ancient writer so if there is nothing ignoble in watching a tragic play on the stage there is nothing ignoble in watching a uh, you know uh, uh wrestling match that is what he says that because he is it's similar you know it's just like watching a uh, theatrical event of course there exists a false right wrestling in which the participants unnecessarily go to great lengths to make a show of fair fight this is of no interest so it's very interesting you no know? he is saying that if a wrestler is trying to make it a fair fair fight fair match you know without indulging in any treachery then that is an amateur sport you know an amateur wrestling okay no the idea behind wrestling itself is that is it doesn't respect any such a, uh, rules of fair match you know you know that so true wrestling wrongly called amateur wrestling is performed in second rate halls where the public spontaneously attunes itself to the spectacular nature of the contest like the audience at a suburban cinema so you must have watched in the past people watching cinema in the cinema hall they will be partaking in when the hero beats the villain uh, the people will be you know uh, you know uh, they will be ecstatic and uh, or they will be inter- in- inter- interfering in the uh, you may have you know read about the jocks you know when rajinikanth is or suresh kobi i have in my childhood i used to remember that kind of stories you know uh the hero maybe m- must be you know it may be the hero may be different in uh, different localities maybe rajinikanth or uh, suresh gobi so he is beating uh, the villain and the villain is uh, coming with weapons from behind one of the audience threw a knife to the uh, you know screen saying that you, you take this knife and you know kill that uh, no such kinds of jokes so that is the way the you know people in the past used to in, in the, you know not in that excess but you know they used to emotionally attach themselves so in wrestling in the second and uh, secondary halls even in now uh, in the present age it will be something like that so then these people wax indignant because wrestling is a stage managed sport okay so the same people who watch it and enjoy it and even you no know, through obscenities they may later complain that it's an ignoble sport or it's a stage managed fight things like that so the public uh, is completely uninterested in knowing whether the contest is rigged or not in the case of wrestling and rightly so it abandons itself to the primary which of the spectacle which is to abolish all motives and all consequences what matters is not what it thinks but what it sees so if you're watching a live performance what it sees in front of your eyes that is the most important thing rather than any other motive or consequences or you know morals so things like this, these doesn't have any impact you know do not have any impact in in watching a live performance like wrestling or theater this public knows very well the distinction between wrestling and boxing so just like just as we have this theory like you know 
willing suspension of disbelief you know uh, in romantic period and all that they say that the people who read a literary work or watch a theatrical performance they know that it is a theatrical element it's an imaginary uh, story and what is happening uh, on the stage is just the direction by or story by somebody and it is not real so we are suspending our rationality at one point of time and watching it so in the same way a person who watches wrestling knows that it is not boxing so what is the peculiarity with the boxing boxing always follow a rigid pattern rules and things like that <laughs> no so it knows that boxing is a jansenic uh, jansenist uh, sport means a very divine kind of very noble kind of sport based on a demonstration of excellence so what is important in boxing is the demonstration of excellence rather than killing the enemy or beating him till death okay so one can bet on the outcome of a boxing match with wrestling it would make no best no sense you know in the uh, be, uh, before the event itself you, you may or by the by seeing the uh, movements of uh, different uh, you know participants or athletes you know uh, boxers we may be able to judge what the outcome of a boxing match but it, it is not the case with a wrestling match a boxing match is a story which is constructed before the eyes of the spectator so it's a, a very you know well planned well played thing in wrestling on the contrary it is each moment which is intelligible not the passage of time so each moment in wrestling is important not the passage of time the spectator is not interested in the rise and fall of fortunes he expects the transient image of certain passions so each moment so many passions are coming on the stage and these passing of emotions in each moment each movement or each second that is of great importance rather than the outcome of the match for uh, especially in the case of wrestling so the spectator is not interested in the rise and fall of fortunes he expects the transient uh, image of certain passions wrestling therefore demands an immediate reading of the juxtaposed meaning so that there is no need to connect them so each moment is important and the meaning they arrive at each second each uh, action that is important you don't have to connect with uh, you know uh, the uh, outcome of it okay so the logical conclusion of the contest doesn't interest the wrestling fan while on the contrary a boxing match always implies a science of the future in other words wrestling is a sum of spectacles of which no single one is a fun- function so wrestling you can find different emotions different activities on the stage and these are not the functions of it okay each moment impo- imposes the total knowledge of a passion which rises erect and alone without ever extending to the crowning moment of a result thus the function of the wrestler is not to win it is to go it is to go exactly through the motions which are expected of him so there are certain expectations from the audience and the wrestler has to satisfy the audience rather than winning it is said that judo contains a hidden symbolic aspect so when it comes now we have already compared it with uh, boxing and when it compare with judo there are uh, people who say that judo has some symbolic meaning behind it just like literary texts or uh, with it and uh, connotative uh, things so even in the midst of efficiency is just as a uh, measured precise but restricted drawn accurately but by a stroke without volume so there is great you know perfection in the actions of a judo player you know? judo you know athlete wrestling on the contrary uh, offers excessive justice Ex- exploited to the limit of their meaning in judo a man who is down is hardly down at all he rolls over he draws back he eludes defeat or if the uh, later is obvious he immediately disappears so for example if you play judo or karate match you know just you, you don't have to in, score a point that is the most important thing no you just need to just hit you know for example just hit and claim it you know that is what happens in a karate match for example or such a kinds of games so in judo also getting the point is what is important no you need to come out with a move and you need to perfectly implement it rather than beating him down to death that is not what uh, what is required in a judo match or any other uh, kind of sport items okay 
But whereas in wrestling, a man who is down is exaggeratedly so. For example, uh, in, you watch a wrestling match. A person who, uh, who is beat, beaten. Now, we need to... Uh, the, the person who had beaten and the person who had beat, uh, beaten up, uh, they need to show it to the audience that he, they, they have been... Uh, no, uh, no, he had been you know, beaten by. So... Uh, completely fills the eyes of the spectator with the intolerable spectacle of his powerlessness. So the powerlessness of the opponent has to be shown in front of the eye. Of, uh, it has to be seen and the spectator needs to enjoy it or uh, they have to uh, witness it. That is what happens in, that is the re- requirement of a wrestling match. This function of grand eloquence is indeed the same as that of ancient theatre. So this is the same with the ancient theatre, whose principle, language and pros or properties, mass and buskins, and you know, concurred in the exaggeratedly visible explanation of a necessity. So you need to remember that they used to have mask, you know, even from such a long distance, the people need to be able to identify the hero and the villain and things like that, no? So, the gesture of the vanquished wrestler signifying to the world a defeat, which far from disgusting, sorry, disguising, he emphasizes and holds like a pause in music. So just like a pause in a music item, it has to be shown in front of the audience that he had been, uh, you know, defeated. So far from, uh, corresponds to the mask of antiquity meant to signify the tragic mode of spectacle. Uh, in wrestling, as on the stage in antiquity, one is not ashamed of one's suffering. One knows how to cry. One has a liking for tears. So a person who had been defeated in a wrestling match, he'll be, he'll cry aloud. He will, you know, make all kind of show to make sure uh, to make to convey the convey to the audience that he had been failed. That is the ultimate. So it is the the uh, the similarity occurs between an ancient theater and a wrestling match. So each sign in wrestling is therefore endowed with absolute clarity. Since one must always understand everything on the spot. So contrary to a poet poem, you know, uh, you will, uh, you may require hours and hours to maybe uh, to understand the symbolic and other aspects of a, poet, a poetic composition. But whereas if you watch a wrestling match, each moment has to be clearly understood by the audience. As soon as the adversaries are in the ring, the public is overwhelmed with the obviousness of the roles. So we have certain roles, you know, uh, there is this villain character, he is very bad character, you know, the other person is somewhat good, you know, you may have seen wrestling match, Undertaker, Brock and so many other figures coming out and doing, you know. So as in the theatre, each physical type expresses to excess the part which has been assigned to the contestant. So in the ancient theatre as well, we will be able to, we don't like to uh, introduce anyone as a, you know, hero or as a joker, you know, he will be, uh, you know, there, there will be such kinds of stock characters in ancient theatre, you know? just like that. So here he is giving an, in, uh, an example of a wrestler in his time, Thawin, a 50 year old with an obese and sagging body. So Thawin as a wrestler. He has a sagging or a hanging kind of a body, obese kind of a person whose type of asexual hideousness or dreadful ugliness always inspires feminine nicknames. So whenever he comes onto the ring, he will be given nicknames, feminine nicknames, which always, you know, will be, you know, kind of a negative attribute at that time. So this plays in his flesh the character characters of baseness. So whenever the moment we see him, uh, we will come to the knowledge that we will understand that he is a base. He, he, he has his uh, the baseness of his character will be evident. So, for his part is to represent what in the classical concept of the zealot or the bastard, you know, uh, the bastard archetypal character in uh, a tragic play. So, in the same way, like, appears as organically repugnant. So, the nausea voluntarily provoked by Thawin shows therefore a very extended use of science. Not only is ugliness used here in order to signify baseness, but in addition, ugliness is wholly gathered into a particularly repulsive quality of matter. 
so the entire body is uh, reminds us of that uh, you know uh, repressive nature of him the pallid collapse of the dead flesh you know the sinking meat you know he has been called so that the passionate contamination of the crowd no longer stems from his judgment but instead from the very depth of his humors so the moment the uh, audience sees him they will be coming out with that kind of a, a kind of a conclusion judgment it will therefore let itself be uh, uh, you know frantically frantically employed in an idea of thought which will conform entirely with this physical origin so his actions on the stage as well as his physical nature will give us the same kind of an idea there is an absolute similarity or kind of a, you know uh, sync with the, the body and the uh, nature of him the character of him so his actions will perfectly correspond to the essential viscosity of his personage so there is this absolute clarity it is therefore in the body of the wrestler that we find the first key to the contest so in order to understand a wrestling match you need to study the or you need to understand the body of the wrestler that will give you the clue to understand the uh, entire wrestling match i know from the start that all of thorwin's actions his treacheries cruelties and acts of cowardice will not fail to mesh up to the first image of ignobility he gave me the you no know, the first impression of uh, seeing him will give you the impression of the ignobility ignobility uh, in his character and uh, his actions will satisfy you with that uh, that kind of an understanding so i can trust him to carry out intelligently and to the le- last detail all the gestures of a kind of amorphous amorphous business and this filled to the brim the image of the most repugnant bastard there is the bastard of tepes so he will gi- give you the idea that he is the ultimate villain the ultimate bad character wrestlers therefore have a physique as pre- peremptory as those of the characters of the commedia del arte who display in advance in their costumes and attitudes the future contents of their parts just as pantaloon can never be anything but a ridiculous cocoa halikin and a steward servant and the doctor a stupid pedant in the same way thawin will never be anything but an ignoble traitor rainieri a tall brown fellow with a limp body and unkempt hair the moving image of passivity masoud short and arrogant like a cock that of grotus conceit and osano uh and a feminine teddy boy first seen in a blue and pink dressing gown dressing gown that doubly humorous of a vindicative a vindicate vindictive salop or bitch for i do not think that the public of the elgia elysium on martyr like litter believe the word salop to be the masculine so he is giving uh, some examples you know for example in the ancient theater the characters we will be able to understand that he is a villain and the other person is a joker so in the same way he is giving out the list of certain wrestlers and certain characters in literature which will give you that idea about that character even before uh, the play begins or the wrestling match begins okay the physique of the wrestlers therefore con- constitutes a basic sign so the basic sign if it is a semiotic reading of the wrestling match the semiotics of wrestling Uh, the first sign that we need in order to understand a wrestling match is the body of the wrestler which like a seed contains the whole fight but this seed proliferates for it is at every turn during the fight in each new situation that the body of the wrestler casts to the public the magical entertainment of a temperament which finds its natural expression in a gesture the different strata of meaning throw light on each other and form the most intelligible of spectacles wrestling is like a diacritic writing above the fundamental meaning of his body the wrestler arranges comments which are episodic but always opportune and constantly help the ra- reading of the fight by means of gestures attitudes and mimicry which make the intention utterly obvious so each action of the wrestler uh, gives you the meaning like an episode uh, in a in a series series of work or something like that so sometimes the wrestler triumphs with a repulsive sneer while kneeling on the good sportsman sometimes he gives the crowd a conceited smile which forbodes an early revenge sometimes pinned to the ground he hits the floor ostentatiously to make evident to all the intolerable nature of his 
situation and sometimes he erects a complicated set of signs meant to make the public understand that he legitimately personifies the ever entertaining image of the grumbler endlessly confabulating about his displeasure so we will be the a, a person who is watching the uh, wrestling match we will have the good wrestler as well as the bad wrestler and how we will be understanding from the actions on the ring so he will be beating him or he will be taking revenge upon an earlier action he will be beating in the ring you know you know showing off his extreme anchor and he will be giving a, a treacherous smile to the audience to make us understand that this is an action for a previous one or something like that and every such action will give you the meaning okay so we are therefore dealing with a real human comedy so just like a, a comedy in theater were the most socially inspired nuances of passion conceit rightfulness refined cruelty a sense of paying one's debt always felicitously find the clearest sign which can receive them express them and triumphantly carry them to the confines of the heart so just like all these themes are uh, themes in a comic uh, comedy we can see all these in a uh, wrestling match it is obvious that such a at such a pitch it no longer matters whether the uh, passion is genuine or not what the public wants is the image of passion not passion itself so what the spectacle uh, sorry the audience needs is the image of passion not the passion itself so it has to be clearly understood by the audience there is no more a problem of truth in wrestling than in the theater so a person who is a villain or hero in a, a theatrical event so he has to be a villain the, uh, the audience should understand it through his actions in the same way the element of truth is no longer important in both what is expected is the intelligible representation of moral situations which are usually private so in a normal life you know in our personal lives we may not be able to understand if a person is sad or if a person is happy need not be not everybody will be exposing their emotions to the outside world but that is not what happens in a wrestling match or in a theater an audience should be able to understand even the internal you know uh, trauma of the character you know in in tragedy that is why we have so many locations and asides so the, uh, the complete uh, you know uh, understanding uh, of the meaning that is what is required this emptying out of the interiority to the benefits of its exterior sense so interiority means what is happening inside us so that has to be emptying out to the benefits of his exterior sense so using our exterior sense we need to showcase our internal feelings that is what uh, what happens in a theater uh, or a character what is he what he is doing in a theater so this is uh, uh, what exactly happens with a wrestler so this exhaustion of the content by the form is the very principle of triumph in classical art so this is the feature of classical art and this is the feature of wrestling match wrestling is an immediate pantomime my my you know pantomime it's an immediate pantomime infinitely more efficient than the dramatic pantomime so it, it may be better than a dramatic pantomime in the sense that for the wrestlers just needs no anecdote no decor in short no transference in order to appear true so you may require some kind of a, tra a translation or some kind of an interpretation in order to understand a dramatic uh, presentation but you don't require any such kind of an external uh, help in the form of costume or any other thing in order to really decoration or interpretations in order to understand a wrestling match each moment in wrestling is therefore like an algebra which instantaneously unveils the relationship between a cause and its represented effect so there is this cause and effect which is directly played out in the ring wrestling fans certainly experience a kind of intellectual pleasure in seeing the moral mechanism function so perfectly so there is this uh, this uh, aspect as well there is this uh, emotional connect or intellectual pleasure so there will be the good wrestler a representation of a good wrestler and a representation of the bad wrestler so the bad wrestler will be doing anything to show off his badness to us in order to communicate his uh, baseness of character he will be doing a lot of treacherous work and whenever he was beaten up by the so called good wrestler 
there will be some kind of a satisfaction in the audience that he was bad and he was paid off you know in a, in our normal life we will not see the villains getting punished you will be finding you know uh, uh, politicians bribing uh, officials indulging in corruption but you will not see them puni- getting punished but in the ring you will see it in your in in with your eyes you will be able to see it so that is the success of it you know so there is this moral element in it somehow so some wrestlers who are great comedians entertain as much as a, as much as much as a male character because they succeed in imposing an immediate reading of their inner nature amen mazoud a wrestler of an arrogant and ridiculous character as one says that habagon is a character always delights the audience by the mathematical rigor of his uh, his transcriptions carrying the form of his gestures to the furthest reaches of their meaning and giving to his manner of fighting the kind of vehemence and precision finding in a great scholastic disp- uh, disp- uh, disp- uh, disputation in which what is at stake is at once the triumph of pride and the formal concern with the truth so he, he is giving an example of a wrestler so he is perfectly understood by the like a, a scholastic presentation in a work of art he is his actions are communicating to the audience what is thus displayed for the public is the great spectacle of suffering defeat and justice so in a wrestling match what we are watching is a great spectacle of suffering defeat and justice so you need to remember suffering it has to be communicated and we will be seeing the person suffered to the to the extent we will be able to understand the defeat of uh the good villain uh, the defeat of the bad villain and the uh, success, uh, success of the good uh, will uh, the good uh, wrestler so the, the this third concept justice we have that moral uh, idea behind us so these these three elements are there in a uh, wrestling match wrestling presents man suffering with all the amplification of tragic mass so it is amplified it is ex- you know the, to the extent you know the wrestler who suffers in a hall which is reputedly cruel and arm lock a twisted leg offers an offer offers an excessive portrayal of su- suffering like a primitive pieta pieta you know you remember that painting he exhibits for all for all to see his face exaggeratedly contorted by an intolerable affliction so when a wrestler fails on the stage on the ring it has to be communicated to the extent like an a uh, great artist work like pieta okay it has to be communicated to the full extent so it is obvious of course that in wrestling reserve would be out of place since it is opposed to the voluntary ostentation of spectacle to this expi- exhibition of suffering which is the very aim of the fight so this exhibition of suffering is the very aim of the fight this is why all the actions which produce a suffering are particularly spectacular okay like the gesture of a conjurer who holds out in his his cards clearly to the public so the spect it has to be spectacular the exhibition of su- suffering has to be spectacular suffering which appeared without intelligible cause wouldn't be understood so when it is shown in the ring that a wrestler suffers a lot why he suffers that has to be communicated very clearly so without a cause there will not be any effect so cause and effect relationship is uh, very much has to be maintained a concealed action that is actually cruel would transgress the unwritten rules of wrestling and would have no more sociological efficacy than a mad or parasitic gesture on the contrary suffering appears as inflicted with emphasis and conviction for everyone must not only see that the man suffers but also and a bow all understand why he suffers which is very much important we need to communicate it very clearly why he suffers what wrestlers calls a hold there is any figure which allows want to immobilize the adversary indefinitely and to have him at once mercy has precisely the function of preparing in a conventional though for intelligible fashion the spectacle of suffering of methodically establishing the conditions of suffering so that is why you know when uh, somebody beats the other person it has to be communicated and he will be beating in such a way that at the end when he receives it back the audience will feel the moral you know you know uh, he has been paid off you know that kind of as 
the inertia of the vanquished allows the temporary victor to settle in his cruelty and convey to the public this terrifying slowness of the torturer who is certain about the outcome of his action to grin the face of one's powerless adversary or to scrape his spine with one's fist with a deep and regular movement or at least to produce the superficial appearance of such a justice wrestling is the only sport which gives such an externalized image of torture so if you have if you have ever watched a wrestling match it's not that he is beating the other person he will be beating in such a way that we will be feeling that oh what so this is the only sport which believes in that kind of an excessive showing up of uh, you know cruelty but here again only the image is involved in the game and the spectator doesn't wish for the actual suffering of the contestant he only enjoys the perfection of an iconography so in the same way we see a, a kind of a cruel death uh, or a, a cruel action on the stage in a tragic play we know that in reality they are not dead so in the same way in a wrestling match even though we will be seeing the extent of the emotions played we are not actually we don't want that wrestler to be dead in in reality okay but that excessive showing up that is mandatory so it is not true that wrestling is a sadistic spectacle it is only an intelligible intelligible spectacle so it's not sadistic spectacle why people go and watch and see this you know that is not the, it is intelligible you don't need a translator you don't need any somebody in an external agency to communicate to you what really happens on the ring there is another figure more spectacular than a hold it is the forearm forearm smash this loud slap of the forearm this embryonic punch with which one crowds the chest of one's adversary so this is one element and which is accompanied by a dull noise and the exaggerated sagging of a vanquished body so this is one movement in uh, wrestling match in the forearm smash catastrophe is brought to the point of maximum obviousness so not only that the other person suffers it is in the maximum level so much so that ultimately the just appears as no more than a symbol this is going too far this is transgressing the moral rules of wrestling where all signs must be excessively clear but must not let the int- intention of clarity be seen the public then shouts he is laying on laying it on not because it regrets the absence of real suffering but because it condemns artifice as in theater one fails to put the part across as much by an excess of sincerity as by an excessive excess of formalism it has to be communicated to the audience why and how things like that we have already seen to what extent wrestlers exploit the resources of a given physical style developed and put to use in order to unfold before the eyes i saw the public a total image of defeat so the body how the flaccidity of tall white bodies which collapse with one blow or crash into the ropes with the arms fl- flailing the inertia of massive wrestlers rebounding pitiably of all the elastic surfaces of the ring nothing can signify more clearly and more pres- passionately the exemplary abasement of the ba- vanished deprived of all resilience the wrestler's flesh is no longer anything but an unspeakable heap spread out on the floor where it solaces its relentless reviling and jubilation the, so the other person is beaten to death there is no resilience possible he will never be able to come back so that is shown there is here a par- paroxysm of meaning in the style of antiquity which can only recall the heavily underlined intentions in the roman triumphs at other times there is another ancient posture which appears in the coupling of the wrestlers that of the suppliant who at the mercy of his opponent on bent knees his arms raised above his head is slowly brought down by the vertical pressure of the victor so it all reminds us of the ancient theatrical act and you know gladiator kind of things like that so in wrestling unlike judo defeat is not a conventional sign abandoned as soon as it is understood it is not an outcome but quite the contrary it's a duration a display it takes the ancient myths of public suffering and humiliation the cross and the pillory so in judo if one person uh, fails then the referee will come and declare the other person winner then it's over but it is not what happens in a wrestling it is brought to the maximum so it reminds us of the public humiliation given to criminals and you know things like that in the past 
you know in the cross or in things like that so it reminds us of that activity it is as if the wrestler is crucified in broad daylight and in the sight of all so the public and you know, a burning of or the public crucifixion of things like that you know i have heard it said of a wrestler stretched on the ground he is dead little jesus there on the cross so and these ironic words reveal the hidden roots of a spectacle which enacts the exact gest- gestures of the most, most ancient purification so all these reminds us of the ancient activities of or the ancient methods of punishing the criminals things like that but what wrestling is above all meant to portray is a purely moral concept that of justice i have already just mentioned it there is an element of justice in a wrestling match just like you know in a tragedy a good the actions of you know, the flaws of an uh, of character lead to his suffering so it is because of the flaw that he suffers because of the overarching ambition that macbeth suffered otherwise uh, it wouldn't have been understood by the audience just like that the idea of paying is essential to wrestling so if a person indulges in some kind of a immoral activity illegal activity he has to be the, that action has to be paid off you know uh, he will be punished at the end that has to be uh, clearly communicated and the crowds give it him meant above all else make him pay this is therefore needless to say an imminent justice it's an imminent justice you will not uh, wait for long and longer trials and long and longer kind of action no in our traditional judicial system you file a complaint and you will be going behind it for years and years at the end uh, the culprit will be walking free so which has which makes the uh, you know society angry but when we see on the stage or on the ring that it has been paid immediately will have a satisfaction so the base of the action of the bastard the more delighted the public is by the blow which he justly receives in turn in return if the villain who is of course a coward takes refuge behind the ropes claiming unfairly to have a right to do so by a brazen mimicry he is inexorably pursued there and caught and the crowd is jubilant at seeing the rules broken for the sake of a deserved punishment so he the punishment is deserved that has to be clearly communicated wrestlers know very well how to pay, play up to the uh, capacity for indignation of the public by presenting the very limit of the concept of justice this outermost zone of confrontation where it is enough to infringe the rules of a little more to open the gates of a world without restraints so the uh, wrestler knows how to make the audience uh, satisfied uh, happy for a wrestling fan nothing is finer than the revengeful fury of a betrayed fighter who throws himself vehemently not on the successful opponent but on the smarting image of foul play naturally it is the pattern of justice which matters here much more than his content wrestling is or above all a quantitative sequence of compensations an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth This explains why sudden changes in circumstances have in the eyes of wrestling habitues a sort of moral beauty. They enjoy them as they would enjoy an inspired episode in, in, in a novel. And the greater the contrast between the success of a move and the reversal of fortune, the nearer the good luck of a contestant to his downfall, the more satisfying the dramatic mime is felt to be. So we uh, study about you know, the reversal of situation. things like that in peripety and an acknowledges in uh, theater just so just like that justice is therefore an empowerment of a possible transgression it is from the fact that there is a law that the spectacle of the passions which infringe it derives its value so it is therefore easy to understand why out of five wrestling matches only about one is fair one must realize let it be repeated that fairness is, here is a roll or a rana as in the theater so there is nothing called a fair game in wrestling it is a kind of a game it's a kind of a wrestling match just like a runner in the theater the rules do not at all constitute a real uh, you know constraint they are the conventional appearance of fairness so we are giving the impression that it's a fair play so that in actual fight a fair fight is nothing but an exaggeratedly polite one 
the contestants confront each other with the seal not rage they can remain in control of their passions they do not punish their beaten opponent relentlessly they stop fighting as soon as they are ordered to do so and congratulate each other at the end of a particularly anxious episode during which however they have not ceased to be fair so all these are the the so called fair match in a wrestling match one must of course understand here that all these polite actions are brought to the notice of the public by the most conventional gestures of fairness shaking hands raising the arms ostensibly avoiding a fruitless hold which would detract from the perfection of the contest uh, just like as i said it has to be communicated to the audience that i am doing fair so it is that communication of that id is important rather than being fair conversely foul play exists in its excessive signs administering so what constitute foulness administering a big kick to one's beaten opponent taking refuge behind the ropes while ostensibly invoking a purely formal right a refusing to shake hands with one's opponent before or after the fight taking advantage of, of the end of the round to rush treacherously at the adversary from behind fouling him while the referee is not looking a move much obviously only has a, any value or function because in fact the audience can see it and get indignant about it so since evil is the natural climate of wrestling a fair fight has chiefly the value of being an exception so if there is anything called a fair wrestling that is an exception it is surprises the officiano do who greets it when he sees it as an anachronism and rather a sentimental throwback to the sporting tradition aren't they playing fair those two so it's an anachronism it's not the norm he feels suddenly moved at the sight of the general kindness of the world but would probably die of boredom and indifference if wrestlers didn't quickly return to the orgy of evil which alone makes good wrestling so if you're watching a wrestling and if everybody behaves properly politely things like that then there is no point in watching it there will be no element of entertainment in it so extrapolated fair wrestling could lead only to boxing or judo so a fair wrestling may be something like judo or it is judo or uh, boxing whereas true wrestling derives its originality from all the excesses which make it a spectacle and not a sport so this is the point a wrestling is a spectacle it's a spectacle of excess it's not a sport that is the point that we need to remember the ending of a boxing match or a judo contest is abrupt like the full stop which closes the demonstration so a judo match if it is over it is over that's it the rhythm of wrestling is quite different it is for its natural meaning is that of rhetorical amplification the emotional magniloquence the repeated paroxysms the exasperation of the rhetoric can only find their natural outcome in the most barbaric confusion barbaric confusion some ways among the most successful kind are crowned by a final cherivari a sort of unrestrained fantasy over the rules the laws of the land the referees ensuring and the limits of the ring are abolished everything is abolished swept away by the by a triumphant disorder which overflows into the hall and carries of pelvel pelmel wrestlers seconds referees and spectators so you may have seen that you know even the spectators are being you know they interfere in or they cross the boundaries and jump into the audience and uh, engages in fight this you may be able to watch it it has already already been noted that in america wrestling represents a sort of mythological fight between good and evil of a quasi political nature the bad wrestler always being supposed to be a red you know communist or something like that so that kind of a symbolic meaning will be the in american wrestling okay the process of creating heroes in french wrestling is very different being based on ethics and not on politics what the public is looking for here is the gradual construction of a highly moral image that of the perfect bastard one comes to wrestling in order to attend the continuing adventures of a single major major leading character permanent and multi form like punjo scapino inventive in unexpected figures and yet always faithful to his role the bastard is here revealed as a molier character or a portrait by la brere that is to say of a classical entity and a sense whose acts are only significant epi phenomena arranged in uh, time this stylized character doesn't belong to any particular national party so in the in france there is no politics behind all this 
and whether the wrestler is called kushchenko nicknamed mustache after stalin yes passing uh yet pazian this party job no alone no yes the afrasiano do doesn't attribute him uh, to him any country except fairness observing the rules so this kind of politics is not there in the french wrestling what then is a bastard for this audience composed in part we are told of people who are themselves outside the rules of society essentially someone unstable who accepts the rules only when they are useful to him and transgresses the formal continuity of attitude so this rep- wrestler represents that kind of a people okay the, there are in all societies there are people who obey rule only when it is useful to us and disobey it when nobody is watching that kind of a character he is unpredictable the for social he takes refuge behind the law when he consider that it is in his favor and breaks it when he finds it useful to do so sometimes he rejects the formal boundaries of the ring and goes on beating the uh, hitting the adversary legally protected by the ropes sometimes he reestablishes these boundaries and claims the protection of what he did in respect a few minutes earlier all this happens this inconsistency far more than treachery or cruelty sends the audience besides itself with rage so whenever a wrestler do it does it you know uh, he obeys it when he it is uh, it suits him he disobeys it when it suits him that will make the people angry the audience angry offended not in his morality but in his logic it considers the contradiction of arguments as the baseness of crimes so one has to be uh, consistent in it the forbidden mood becomes dirty only when it destroys the quantitative equilibrium and disturb the rigorous reckoning of compensations what is condemned by the audience is not at all the transgression of insipid official rules it is the lack of revenge the absence of a punishment so if a person if a wrestler breaks a row a rule he has to be punished by the adversary that lack of a punishment make the audience angry so the so that there is nothing more exciting for a crowd than the grandlo can kick given to a vanquished bastard the joy of punishing is at its climax when it is supposed by a mathematical justification contempt is then unrestrained what is no longer dealing with as allowed but with as allowed the verbal gesture of the ultimate degradation okay the bastard kind of uh, the stock kind of characters in uh roman or ancient greek theater so such a precisely finality precise finality demands that wrestling should exactly be what the public expects of it wrestlers who are very experienced know perfectly how to direct the spontaneous episodes of the fight so as to make them conform to the image which the public has of the great legendary themes of his mythology so whenever the audience sees a wrestler the race some kind of an uh, kind of an image about him and uh, the wrestler will do anything in order to conform to the uh, idea of the audience so a wrestler can irritate or disgust he never disappoints for he always accomplishes completely completely by a progressive solidification of science what the public expects of him so if a uh, if an audience expect that he is a villain <coughs> he is a bad he is a bastard then he will do everything in order to conform to that role that is the role assigned to him so in wrestling nothing exists except in the absolute there is no symbol no illusion everything is presented exhaustively so there is no hidden meaning there is no symbolic meaning there is no illusion to previous one okay leaving nothing in the shade each action discards all parasitic meanings and ceremonially offers to the public a pure and full signification round or like nature so contrary to literary text where there will be the parasitic meaning the meaning which kills you know we have studied deconstruction things like that also. so such kinds of things are not there in there is perfect intelligibility this grandiloquence is nothing but the popular and age old image or the perfect intelligibility of re- reality so there is this reality he is the villain or the hero hero and that image has been uh, completely you know uh, followed up so what is portrayed by wrestling is therefore an ideal understanding of things it is euphoria of men raised for a while above the constitutive ambiguity of everyday situations and placed before the panoramic view of a universal nature in which science at last correspond to causes 
without obstacle without deviation without contradiction so why a person go and watch a wrestling match because in real life we will have always uh, you know contradictions or complexity in order to understand why this so but you no know, why we are suffering why we are failing uh, uh, failing in our life so we will have to uh, you know think religiously or philosophically in order to understand the real reason but on the other hand in a wrestling match there is this perfect intelligibility he is a villain because he is doing engaging in a bad activity so he is a bastard things like that that perfect intelligibility is what makes a wrestling match uh, interesting and the hero or the villain of the drama the man who has seen a few minutes earlier possessed by moral rage magnified into a sort of metaphysical sign leaves the wrestling hall impassive anonymous carrying a small suitcase and an arm in arm with his wife no one can doubt that wrestling holds the power of transmutation which is common to the spectacle and to religious worship in the ring and even in the depths of their voluntary nominee wrestlers remain gods because they are for a few moments the key which opens nature the pure justice which suppresses good and good from evil and unveils the form of a justice which is at last intelligible so in real life we may not be able to understand what is good and what is evil we will not be able to carry out justice so we think that there is the crime happening or there is injustice happening we may not be able to pay it you know we will not be able to uh and you know, find a solution to that but in the ring the wrestler will be able to do that, that that's why he is equated with the god so this is the somewhat a kind of an understanding of uh they say the age of, uh, the, the world of wrestling okay in which uh, uh in a, to the most part uh baths is comparing it with the great uh, great tragic play you know where it is also the failure of the, in the part of the hero leads to his suffering and fall so there is clear you know but there are some contrast there is no hidden meaning things like that and i hope that this is a essay is uh, you know able you will be able to understand the idea behind it thank you thank you all